smartest man of the 20th century was not Albert Einstein. It wasn't Stephen Hawking, Nikola Tesla, or even Oppenheimer. To take the top spot, someone would have to be extremely well-rounded and contribute to a wide variety of fields, which none of the above thinkers did. But there was a man born in 1903 who had, and I quote, learned to read by age two, was fluent in Latin, ancient Greek, German, English, and French, could divide two eight-digit numbers in his head by the time he was six, and, as a child bored during the summer, decided to teach himself calculus and memorize 22,000 pages of history. His name was John von Neumann. If you just take a glance at John von Neumann's Wikipedia page, you're going to notice something very different from that of, say, Einstein. It's not just about his life, work, and death. Work is split into four very large sections. Physics, maths, economics, and computer science. John von Neumann was a polymath, a da Vinci of the 20th century. To prove this, let me tell you a few stories. Von Neumann's father was skeptical of allowing him to study mathematics. He pushed Johnny to do something more practical. After some negotiating, they reached a compromise. He would do two degrees at the same time, chemistry and math. Okay, stop. I know what you're thinking. How is that impressive? People do double majors all the time. Well, he did them at three different universities and three different countries. In four years, he had become a chemical engineer and obtained a doctorate in math. During this time, he attended a lecture by George Polio, one of the brightest mathematicians at the time. Polio famously spoke of a theorem that he had been trying to prove but failing at. He told the class that it was okay if they couldn't understand given that theorem's complexity. After a few minutes, Johnny raised his hand. He came to the blackboard and wrote a perfect proof. As Polio says, there was the day he became afraid of John von Neumann. Have you seen A Beautiful Mind? What's it about? John Nash, right? The guy who created game theory? Wrong. John Nash did not create game theory because John von Neumann created game theory way back in 1908. He expanded on this decades later when collaborating with Oscar Mergenstern. Together, they laid the foundations of modern economics and for the basic strategic logic used by the United States when thinking about nuclear weapons. The buck does not end there. When consulting for the army, he created the architecture for the world's first computers. He needed this to help work on the hydrogen bomb. By the way, did I mention that he worked on the Manhattan Project? Okay, okay, stop. Computers. So, John von Neumann created the architecture we still use for our computers today. He then came up with the idea of using numerical simulations, which he invented, for weather forecasts. So the architecture your phone runs on, and the methodology in your phone's weather app, and the idea of the weather app all came from this one guy. And he also contributed to physics, but I'm not getting into that. He achieved so much despite dying at the age of 53, essentially the peak age for a scientist. I'm not exactly sure why von Neumann is not well known given his amazing track record, but I have one guess. He, similarly to Oppenheimer, does not fit into the image of a genius person. When one thinks of genius, they imagine a hairy fuzzball running away all day long, forgetting about relationships and neglecting normal human pleasures. Johnny was not like that. Johnny liked drinking, Johnny liked smoking, and Johnny loved race cars. There's a pole in Princeton named after him because he kept crashing into it with his cars. In his office, he would play extremely loud German march music, which would constantly annoy Einstein. And chances were that he did it on purpose, since they low-key disliked one another. There's even a story of how he offered to pick up Einstein at Los Alamos one time, but purposefully drove him to the wrong train station. Yeah, he liked pranks. Which is to say that he was imperfect in very conventional and human ways. He didn't suffer from schizophrenia like John Nash did, then didn't stare at walls all day, but he was terrible at poker and would lose all his money to less talented mathematicians who are actually capable of keeping a straight face. And perhaps, someone like this is not fitting to represent genius. But I hope that the next time you hear someone be called the Einstein of something, your reaction will be to think that John von Neumann was the John von Neumann of everything.